Hello, everybody, and welcome to Half the Brain, the podcast that has half the brain you do and half the facts you do. Um, Niall, Ferry Tunk, how are we doing? Love you, all right? Yeah, man, I am very well, thank you. How are you? Um, I'm excellent, mate. I'm, I am excellent. I managed to get AEW uh, Wembley tickets on the day, uh, so I've got a, a nice little seat. Uh, looks like I'm underneath a little gantry, so I've got a... I've got loads of leg room at the top of the some stairs. <laughs> it works out. It looks like I've got some uh, right good seats. To be fair, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. So I'm, I'm very happy. Yeah. Are you going? Are you planning on going now? Uh, no, um, I couldn't get the time off work basically. But I noticed on Facebook there is a lot of our our mutual pals that be going to uh, tear it up down there. Yes, yes, I've seen that. I've seen that. A good few of my friends and whatnot uh acquaintances shall be there so hopefully it'll be a bit of a friend fest as well so <laughs> that'll be good quite good but to, on today's podcast we're welcoming into the stable uh vitamin j all the way from the uh pod punk <laughs> podcast jay man how are we doing you all right love yeah not too bad not too bad how do you how do good 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 stuff mate good stuff tell us jay in the last month um what uh, give us a promo, a match, or a, 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 a vignette you've seen that you've liked in the last month. Could be from any time, any place, anywhere. It doesn't have to be current. But give us something you've watched recently. Well, I I kind of only really watch old stuff or AEW at the moment. Um, I'm very much not a WWE fan. Right. Um, which, com- it, it, that's a long story, but wait, yeah. Um, but in terms of your question, um, so uh, I'm gonna go with uh, L V Kingo, their hero versus Kenny Omega from Oof. Dynamite a few weeks ago. Yeah, um, possibly one of the most insane uh, feats of acrobatics that I have ever seen. Uh, v Kingo is, let's just put it, it's ridiculous. That guy is not human, and, and but they've topped it with people like Commander as well, yeah. and all these other like in like. I don't know what they're feeding them down there, but my God, like, <laughs> there's, some, there's, some, there's some ridiculous stuff going I, on. I'm sort of feeling like how uh, ECW fan felt when they first saw Rey Mysterio versus like Psychosis or something like that. I think that's where we are at in the timeline yeah. of things. <laughs> if you I, will. Mean, I mean, let's let's face it, right? We're probably, as wrestling fans of our age, we've probably seen it all, we think. Exactly. And then yeah. next thing you know, there's these guys that can do things that are just ridiculously out of this world well, that, so that, yeah yeah that vikingo turned into sonic the hedgehog halfway through a match and did like a <laughs> spin over the top rope and i was like this guy's just collected rings at this point what's what's going on here Who do you but yeah he, I, I did see that it was a good match he wrestled someone on <laughs> rampage a couple of weeks ago as well and he took he, he did a he jumped off the top rope onto the dude did a canadian destroyer on the apron but the way that his back landed on the apron was one of the most horrendous thuds. Like that, how he, how he <laughs> landed was worse than how the duty gave the the Canadian destroyer to landed, and uh, yeah, and then like got up and just carried on going. So the guy's unbreakable as well. So well, at the moment he is enjoying yeah. while he's around kids because like Will Ospreay <laughs> in a few years he might be sat in a car and crying into a YouTube video saying he can't go anymore. <laughs> you never know. What about you, Niall? Have you seen anything or watched anything last month? Um, We've been catching up on some Botchamanias earlier, actually. Oh, oh yes, yes, yes. And the the WrestleMania edition, like the opening sequence for that is probably the best Botchamania opener I've ever seen. <laughs> and there was a clip of um, Roman Reigns, like, waiting for his opponent and everything. Yeah. And he's, like, sniffing the air. And he goes over to a guy, he's like, it's you, isn't it? It's you, I can see it in your eyes. Like someone's <laughs> enjoying a, a bit of a spliff down the front row at Mania. That's like <laughs> living the dream, man. <laughs> <laughs> that, to be fair, though, yes. Hell yeah. Hell um, yeah. I've been watching my, what I call my <laughs> daily affirmation as well, which is the uh, John Zandig promo. <laughs> All right. It gets me fired up for a morning, that does. <laughs> what do you mean what happened? Jesus! <laughs> I have uh, I have uh, Jushin Thunder Liger's music to uh, G me up in the morning. That's uh, that's I guess we out of bed. And then uh, great great Muta sends me to bed with nightmares. It's uh, it's a lovely system I've got working on myself. <laughs> mine so, has to, my, sorry, oh, my, my one of those has to be uh, Ravishing Rick Rude's '92 WCW theme. 
You know, the sim- he's simply ravishing. That's such a baller yeah. song. If you want a tune, right, this is a very deep cut, right? Then, And this is an amazing <laughs> song. In, um, I think it's 96, Paul Arndorf, Mr. Wonderful, has a tune with WCW that's called, uh, that's sort of like, Wonderful, they call him Mr. Wonderful. And then a woman sings the exact same thing. It's, oh, oh, mate. Just play that if you want to feel good about yourself and just think they're singing <laughs> about you. And it's uh, fantastic. <laughs> I heard a rumour, um, Baz, that that was uh, yours and Catherine's song, Walking Down the Aisle. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was just me when I walked in. That was that was what was played then. Yeah. <laughs> right, this month, we're here to talk about tag teams. We've got two of the best. We've all got two of the best and two of the worst tag teams to ever grace our televisual screens. Hopefully, no one's picked one of the same ones, but I guarantee you will. <laughs> Someone will have. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, seeing as you're the guest, Jordan, you get to go first on the best. We'll go start off with the best and we'll end with the worst. So okay. Give us, give us one of your best slash good tag teams. My first uh, best tag team. Yeah. Um, and this is probably going to be a bit maybe controversial for some people. They're a Marmite tag team um, all around, uh, but it's the Young Bucks. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, they're, they're, they're not on my list, but I, I agree. I think they're a very good tag team. The reasons for it are, they, are this, right? So I, I was once upon a time um, guilty probably of just going, oh, Spot Boys. They don't sell. They don't have any storytelling. There's no psychology in them. All that sort of stuff. And I, I probably bought into that because I would probably watch maybe like a the odd PWG DVD or an ROH DVD. See on an Impact doing a five minute, uh, eight million person tag team match. You know, with like Motor City Machine Guns, Sanjay. As Dutton, Generation Me. As Generation Me, exactly. And just going yeah. like a billion mile an hour because that's all they had time to do or had time for on Impact. So. Fair, right? But since my friend uh, Craig, shout out to Craig, uh, he is uh, a massive New Japan fan and he uh, was very much like, check out New Japan. And I was like, well, I don't really like wrestling without English commentary. Yeah. I, I just kind of, it just doesn't, I, I just get bored. Plus also um, with New Japan, it, it, it tends to be the storylines are uh, this wrestler versus the idea of wrestling. Uh, and it lasts 25 <laughs> years. And a, a dragon will be included. Yeah, well. um, yeah, yeah. I understand but that. Uh, seeing seeing them in that, and it was round about the time when uh, AJ Styles was about to go to the Fed. So, um, yeah. seeing them do like watching them interact with the rest of the Bullet Club, watching them sort of how they would be conflicted with turning on new leaders uh, or, 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 you know, the person that was leaving, you know, yeah. you, they, they, it wouldn't just be like a quick sort of thing. There was actually some sort I was like, actually they got, they got a little bit of acting chops. And then obviously in AEW, two of the best storylines that have happened in the last few years has been um, the bloodline with Roman and uh, them. And I know I said, I don't watch WWE before, but that's the only thing that I've actually bothered to look into because, again, my friend Craig, who watches everything, was like, "You check this out, just watch it." Yeah. And it's well, like, I think it's the only thing that they've been bothered. WWE have been bothered to do as well in the last two years, really, as well. So. Precisely, and it's, it's like I just watched those highlights and stuff. And the other one has been the elite um, losing Hangman, um, the the, the uh, awkwardness with Kenny, how yeah. that's all sort of interwoven. Their matches with teams yes there have been massive spots yes there are a lot of super kicks yes there are a lot of flips and all that sort of stuff but there's like you watch their matches and stuff and you can see that they're they've learned and they've become in my head like in my head they're like it's like goes it goes the rockers it goes the hardy boys and then it goes the young bucks the young bucks is like taking all the best things of the rockers all the best things of the hardy boys and in, now incorporate it into something that's brilliant and i think the flack they get now is nonsense and it's just people who either saw like me clips and stuff um on the internet the odds dvd maybe their impact run or they listen to bell ends like cornet who just <laughs> pay everything for everything's sake you know what i mean those kind of yeah. old-fashioned the old guys the older, yeah 
because they yeah. like it like how it, how it was when they liked it. That thing. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so for me, Matt and Nick Jackson, they, they're good promos as well. Um, I love the little things that they do. So like, you know, in uh, Marvel movies, you get all these Easter eggs and stuff. So like there'll they'll be something in the background and then seven movies later it, it appears. Yeah. So one of the things that I uh, was watching was I can't remember what the YouTube channel is called, but it's like it taught it, 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 they break down the whole um, Hangman Elite um, situation from the start of it, AEW to Hangman winning the belt. Yeah. And they point out things like they they do things like when the Bucks kicked Hangman out of uh, the Elite for being a drunk and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. They were stood a certain way and they were wearing certain gear. And they were yelling stuff at Hangman, like, you've changed, you've changed, you're this, that, and the other. And it was, like, right after Hangman asked them to come to the ring with him, and they said no. You then go to, like, later on when uh, it's Kenny versus Hangman for the belt, and Hangman goes to them and goes, I want you guys to stay as far away from me as possible this time. And they're all wearing the same gear, but Hangman looks identical. And the Bucks now have got, like, stupid, elaborate, like, hair and, like, f- they've changed their persona. They've really, you you put the two side by side, you can see character development. You can see the, do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, all the stuff they get accused of not being not good being at or doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah and yeah. they go to that, like, if, if you want a good story, it's there. If you want, like, depth and you want to re- look at Easter eggs and stuff, it's all there as well. So, you, no matter what kind of fan you are, they're catering to you. And I yeah. think that people not, uh, respecting that or acknowledging that is heinous. So yeah, for that reason, they're my first the books. best tag team. I can't, I can't disagree with you there, mate. At all in the slightest. Like they've, I think they've transcended into television very well. You know, yeah. a lot of indie people can get uh, stuck in that mindset of I just you know need to do the crowd and and forget about the TV sort of thing. Um, but yeah, I think they've transitioned to TV and they could do the backstage skits. They sort of, I think, been, uh, built themselves on the internet um, with that, you know, with the uh, being the elite, etc. videos uh, has helped them sort of like come out and find a bit of a character and has helped them more in the ring as well and, and stuff like mm-hmm. that with the promos as well. So yeah, 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 man, definitely one of my... One of my favourite tag teams going at the moment. Um, I've not put them down on my list, but uh, yes. yeah, they are. They are. Uh, I, I will. I will give them that. I will give them that. Very good. Very good. Mister Nile, Ferry Tunk, what have you got for us on your first good one? Again, it might be a controversial one, or okay. a lot oh. of people might go. Actually, yeah. So, <laughs> my first one. Yeah. How can it be anybody other than the world's greatest tag team? Charlie Haas and Shelton Benjamin. Oh, yes. Wow, okay. not heard of that for them for a while. But yeah, fair, yeah but yeah. <laughs> when they came in as Team Angle, um, like every single match they put on, whether it was five minutes, 15 minutes, whatever, was an absolute banger. It was literally pure wrestling. Yeah. And yeah. at that time, it was such a breath of fresh air. I know you had like Brock coming in from, you know, NCAA and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. Those two in the ring had such incredible chemistry, and I feel that they they went too soon. Mm-hmm. Like they could have probably still been around in like oh easy mid twenty tens. They, they could have brought brought them back, uh, you know, for a, a longer run or something as well. Like, but yeah, they didn't have that longer run. Was it just like two thousand three to two thousand four or something like that? They had yeah. about a year, I think. But like, they got instantly put with Angle and got made into like you know putting a big mania sort of main event if you will they were they were part of that main event where yeah. uh, brock does the leapfrog that's where uh, um, you, uh, uh, not leapfrog I, sorry three three sixty splash uh, something. Sh- uh, shooting star press that's the word yeah. that's the one i think like they had it, it was immediate and pun intended gold with the whole team angle thing because <laughs> it was like you know intensity integrity intelligence and I think Kurt like played the role so well in like, you know, being the coach and kind of like elevating them up. Cause yeah. you knew as soon as you saw like the promos for that weekend's raw or SmackDown or whatever, it's like world's greatest tag team versus um, I didn't care who it was against because I knew <laughs> that I would be like, Yeah, this is this is the one. They and had some cool they... move in, in innovative moves as well. Uh mm. take the world's greatest tag team on them. The one where um I think it was like Hass would hold up the legs and then Benjamin would jump over Hass and sort of like 
backbreaker to the to the yeah. guy. That was I always remember them and, and, and a couple of others just like wow these guys yeah they were good they were very yeah yeah wasn't it Haas though that had like injury issues or something that derailed it? Yeah, he had real personal problems as well. And he had a bit, yeah, yeah, he, he fell um, into that unfortunate wrestling didn't his, trope, didn't he? Did, didn't his brother die? Yeah, yeah, as part yeah, that, he was, that was training before? to be a wrestler as well. Wasn't that before the world's greatest tag team though? Yeah, yeah, but potentially, yeah, 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 yeah. And then after that, I think he had a few injuries, didn't he? But when, um, when. Uh, the Fed brought back Shelton Benjamin. I was like, I know Haas is still wrestling occasionally on indies and stuff. I was like, please, 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 please bring him back. <laughs> Never happened, no, unfortunately. Unfortunately. No, man. He's, he, no, he's, dr- he's lost a lot of weight, unfortunately. He's dramatic. He's got, like, I'm just looking at a Google image search for him now. And he, yeah, he doesn't look, he doesn't look his best, unfortunately. So, no, I'm, I'm not going down that rabbit hole. I want to remember him as he was. Fair. Yeah. Don't, don't Google it. Stay off Google. <laughs> don't Google well, any talking wrestlers. I'm talking, about, um, <laughs> talking about Angle being a good leader, though, for them. I mean, he wasn't, though, for that. Uh, what was the other one? Luther Reigns. Uh, oh, he was he was Angle's protege yes. for a while, yeah. wasn't he? Uh, the, uh, the guy who's never had peas before. I ain't never had peas before. <laughs> the um, name itself it was like it was a name that like a 12 year old would pick on like an efed yeah <laughs> luther reigns okay man yeah yeah i ain't never had peas before that's all you remembered for me is uh, literally all you remember about every con- convention you go to you now it's like have you tried peas yet <laughs> <laughs> somebody somebody's giving him a plate of peas at some point and yeah uh, right, I'm going to go with my first pick, and I'm going to go with uh, a team from TNA. But they've oh. been other places, but they were initially a TNA team. And uh, this is like the first time I saw the sort of stuff that uh, the Young Bucks were doing, or are doing now, if you will, but more the speed of it all. And I'm going to go with the Motor City Machine Guns. Oh, um, yes. Fair, 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 fair. I, I can't remember how they used to do it. Like that, <laughs> like that. It's a bit of that. Uh, there, bit of that. What, what there, like, yeah. Point at your hand in the middle, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> um, yeah, to- um, what a fantastic team. I- I- I'm going to give also an honourable mention to Speed Muscle, who were uh, Team Japan in a TNA tournament, I think, in uh, 2008, 9, something like that. It's on YouTube. Watch that match. Ma- uh, Motor City Machine Guns versus Speed Muscle. What a match that is, by the way, everybody. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, what a fantastic team. Um, just... Like I said, all the moves like the young books are doing now, all the speed and the, the high flying and you know ability, agility and all that sort of stuff. Just but like a little bit earlier before them, and and I think um, Saban went on to have a, a, a world title run, and Alex Shelley, and before they them two were a team, I couldn't stand the pair of them on their own. But the minute you put them together, I was like, I like this team. I like this team, uh, and. Um, in TNA as well, they had a lot of tag teams and a lot of wrestlers that sort of forget forgotten about, but we were amazing, you know, on the day sort of thing. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going with Motor City Machine because I don't think anyone's going to pick them. So, there we go. They've uh, <laughs> recently re-signed with the uh, Impact. Have they? Yeah. Yep. I'm, 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 I'm not. So all fay with impact anymore. I sort of uh, stopped watching it when uh, Hogan came in. I, well, I think it was like the third or fourth episode of Hogan being back. I was like, I am done with this company. <laughs> See you later. And totally then I, gone. yeah. And then did... uh, Aces of Eights happened, and I was like, no, nope, I am, I'm, I'm completely done. See you later, folks. How on earth did you cope with TNA being such a Jeff Jarrett hater? Like. <laughs> how how on earth did you put yourself through that? Like legit. Well, yeah. I mean, to be fair, I think there was a long time where I just turned off the main events, uh, and then then there was like periods where Jarrett wasn't <laughs> around, and it was great. You know, Sting was there, Sting was back, <laughs> and stuff like that. And if it was a Sting match, Sting versus Jarrett, yeah, okay, I might watch that. The only good thing Jarrett's ever done is that MMA stuff against the kids. Um, the rest of it, I just I couldn't stand and. It took me a long time to start watching TNA because of Jarrett. Uh, right, right. 
But when like Dixie sort of took over and they were promoting um, Samoa Joe, it was Samoa Joe that took me over because at first it was, I don't like AJ Styles and I still stick to that. And I don't like Jeff Jarrett. And um, that's all this company seems to be, Jeff Jarrett and, and AJ Styles. And I really can't get behind Ron Truth as a, I, 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 what was he? Uh, Ron the Truth Killings, he was at that point. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of that's asking. his real name as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's his, that's his real, real surname, real name, Killings. Killings. What an awesome saying a surname that is. His documentary on the network <laughs> is absolutely fantastic as well. Is it? All right. It's like, obviously, you see our truth the comedy character in WWE, which he plays, like, superbly. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But when he goes back to, like, the hood and stuff like that and goes around all these people, you're like, holy shit, I've got so much more respect for him as a person now. Cool, man. <laughs> I didn't know any of that to be fair. I might have to watch that, the, the Our Truth documentary. There's a statement I never thought I'd say in my life. I might have to watch <laughs> the Our Truth documentary. And there it is, recorded for posterity. Yeah, well, yeah. I'll tell my grandkids about that one. <laughs> <laughs> right, Jordan, give us your second good tag team, our best tag team. They were taken from us too soon. They are, in my opinion... By far one of the best tag teams that's ever existed. Uh, Hollywood Blondes. Oh. Oh. That was that was a contender for my list. What, what was a it? team they were. It, sh- it should be on everyone's list. And they are not to, not to be confused with the West Hollywood Blondes, ladies no. and gentlemen. No. <laughs> or UK indie team, the Blackpool Blondes. Not them either. I, I, yeah, I've seen them. I've seen them. <laughs> but, so, Hollywood Blondes, let's face it, Steve Austin, Brian Pillman. Mate, amazing. Un- unbelievable tag team, unbelievable group. The fact they were just put together to give them something to do is, a, a, you know, just an insane thing anyway. The fact that they got over to the extent that they did and then got just taken apart because they shouldn't have. Instead of going with that again, stupid decision. But let's focus on that magical year, year and a half. Um, they come together. They they tagged for a bit before they officially were the Hollywood Blondes. Because at mm-hmm. the time, I think um, Pillman was teaming with Barry Windham, if I remember correctly. Barry Windham was in a few with Dustin Rhodes because they were a tag team and they broke up. And But Pillman and Austin were tag together every now and then uh during one of austin's weird periods you know you know that theory that um that, that wrestling uh podcasts have where if a wrestler doesn't wear knee pads he looks more naked yeah <laughs> well austin austin did that for a while like he wrestled with no knee pads i do not like it I, i'm used to braces nice. and knee pads with austin like yeah <laughs> like yeah. no knee pads Ugh, yuck anyway so they wrestled together on you know Saturday nights and worldwides and all that sort of stuff. At the time when I saw them first, I was living in Norway and we had a massive satellite dish out the uh, back of the house. To get, <laughs> um, like I'm, I'm not kidding, like literally the size of the size of the house. It was like the film Stay Tuned. Yes, exactly. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> okay, okay, there we go. Exactly. <laughs> and we used to get uh, DSF, which is uh, Deutsche Sportsfernsehen for you German Ooh. people. And we would, and I would watch WCW on that because the Germans loved WCW. Loved they fucking it. did. They fucking Alex Wright. Oh yeah, the Wonderkind was very much part of. That's the reason yeah. why he got hired, like because it was just German market stuff. Um, but the Hollywood Blondes would be on worldwide all the time from Disney MGM Studios, and I just, I just liked them. I gravitated towards them even as a kid. I thought these two are really good. They had amazing matches with Ricky Steamboat and Shane Douglas, which is probably the only thing. Of any worth Shane Douglas has ever done. Um, <laughs> let's let's be real. Let let's let's genuinely be real. Like he's yeah. one of the worst things about ECW. Is one of the worst things about WCW. He was shite in WWE. Any of all of his issues with you know what? Right? You said like Sting held me down. Sorry, uh, Flair held me down. Sorry, but Michaels held me down. Diesel held me down. Razor. You know why? You're shite. Yeah. And uh, you, you did one good promo in ECW, and that, uh, uh, and that was, was it, it that good. <laughs> <laughs> really was really, it that good uh for 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 <laughs> the the historicness of what it was and what it meant uh and who was there in the arena at the time dennis carl luzo the yeah. the, old, the the president of the nwa it was the it was the ecw coming away from the nwa and forming their own 
heavyweight championship and saying to the world, basically, because it was NWA TV that they were on, saying to the world that, you know, we're, we're going away from that. If you want to follow us, come and watch us. So it's a very important promo for ECW. And I think the way he delivers it is pretty damn spot on. You know, the, this is for the Dusty Rhodes, for the Ric Flair's, for the, you know, and they can all kiss my ass. It's that I just for the for the for what it is, I think it's a, it's a good promo. Yeah. Well, that's it. That's it. I guess. Uh, uh, um. I... <laughs> <laughs> we'll agree to disagree. Um. So. Uh. And then. Um. They had a brilliant set of matches. So then, when they became established tag team, Wyndham said that he's going off onto the off to the world title. So uh, here's a guy. Here's Steve Austin. They get together. They slowly but surely get matching gear. They start doing like the movie role, like little uh, uh, signature arts or stuff. They have tag moves. They rest like they, they they and they fluid and they work so well together. And loads of their matches used to end with some brilliant double team trickery, where like they'd get the fa- the face partner to distract the referee, and then w- while one of them's being pinned, and then they'd come off the top rope and just club to the back of the head, like proper brutal looking. Like they, they you know they go in on those on that particular hit. They were the masters um, of some of the the, the masters of uh, WCW heel tactics, like yeah, running the out the ring. Dark art stuff that they yeah, don't running, do anymore. Exactly, run halfway around the ring, run back in before your guy gets back in, and then smash him in the face before he gets off. It's that kind of stuff, you know. The, exactly. The WCW stuff. And they, but they WCW'd better than anyone is that could <laughs> at the time. You know what I mean? And then you know they they build and build and build, and then they get Flair and on. And they get to wrestle the horsemen. They get Flair out of retirement. Like Flair comes out of retirement. Like what well, not out of retirement, sorry, out of he come back from the from the WWF, didn't he? And then he had a yeah. while where he couldn't wrestle. Yes. Uh because... so his first match back though, he wanted the Hollywood blondes. That's a do you know what I mean? That's a yeah. that's a that shows what I'm saying is like these guys are brilliant. Um and they had t- tremendous matches. They, like I said, they did everything, won the tag titles a few times. But unfortunately, just short lived, and it's something that I felt like when they broke up. I was like, I don't want them breaking up. Uh, I felt like when they broke up, it felt like as a kid when Shawn Michaels and Marty Jannetty broke up. I felt gutted about yeah. it, you know. Um, and then when they were both in WWF, I hoped maybe they'd get back together and do something. Didn't necessarily have to be the blondes, but I thought they worked well together. But then obviously, you know, Pillman again injured all the time, and then unfortunately passed away. So that never got to happen again but definitely 100% what in a in a period in WCW where there was a lot of bad stuff mm. Hollywood Blondes exceed like a, a, in, name me a tag team in that era that are better um and now to ahead. be fair from from Fight. that from apart from the american males um <laughs> But that's just uh, uh, because of their theme tune, let's be honest with it. <laughs> I feel like we're doing them both a little bit of a disservice there by not mentioning the, at the time, the wildest fucking thing I'd ever seen on TV. Pillman's got a gun. Well, that came later on, didn't it? I mean, that was <laughs> WWF. And, and, and I was going to say, their work together in WWF was absolutely amazing. Not yeah. just the Pillman's got a gun. There's a promo, and I think it's before... I think it's before, like, uh, um, it, it's a house show. It's an in-your-house show. Pillman's being interviewed in the toilets, and it's the sort of like the preview. What was the preview? The uh, pre uh, brawl? Uh, no, not brawl for all, but the free for free for all. Yeah, it's the free mm. for all for uh, an in-your-house. Pillman's being interviewed in the toilets, and Austin pops up behind him, and Pillman doesn't notice, and then Austin comes over, beats the shit out of him, and bog washes. Brian Pillman, but the Austin popping up behind him and sort of like mimicking Pillman chatting um, uh, behind uh, it's so funny it's it's so good it, like Austin's facials are so fantastic he's just program. one of the best at doing those sort of things like him yeah. and Mickey T in the supermarket as well clean exactly. up the wall jackass <laughs> <laughs> but it's yeah like he yeah. does stuff like um like Austin that, that that thing where he does where he just laughs and then looks serious, like there's a gif of that, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. yeah. Uh, but it, back to the like the, them as the blondes, like that flair for the for the old thing. 
Um, the, the, the where they mocked yeah. Flair for the gold. Yeah. That's hysterical. Like it, it, Austin and Pillman were both really witty, really clever, like evil heels, coward heels if they needed to be. They played the game uh, against their opponents and they adapted every single match that they had. So it was yeah. just... Oh, it's just magic. And like, go anyone who's got the network, go back and watch that WCW Saturday Nights and Clash of the Champions from 93. Fast forward a bunch. But when you see that beautiful, <laughs> those beautiful men, like, tagging up, watch it and just, oh, mwah, beautiful chef's kiss. <laughs> oh, so good. So good. Mr. Niall, what have you got for us for your second good one, mate? Um, another controversial one. All right, go Again, on, go on. you either love them or hate them. Um, yeah. That kind of defines to me what re- kind of wrestling fan you are. But they changed the face of wrestling forever. Right. All right. Okay. The Outsiders. Oh, mate! When they first came in, pre NWO, and people obviously know like very limited like internet at the time. Everything you got was from dirt sheets. It's like, are they still being paid by Vince to go and destroy? WCW and it felt legit it was like these guys were on my TV screen like in WWF like a few weeks ago yeah and now they've come in and they've basically shat all over WCW <clears throat> what what's going on and I know towards the end of WCW like probably a good few years before the end a lot was being said about how you know their creative control and, and all that kind of stuff but sort of pre- NWO and just as NWO got kind of going in the first six months, the outsiders were just absolutely, they literally left you on the edge of the seat with what they were doing next. They were that unpredictable. Mate, that's a good shout. That is a yeah. bang on shout. I, I'd say um, even when the NWO farm, because they carry that match at the NWO yeah. farm. Hogan just comes out for a leg drop and then a promo at the end. Next show, just a promo. Hogan's still getting the name wrong, and they <laughs> and then they have to mold Hogan through those black and white vignettes that they do yeah. that they are all caught up and, and messed about with. They control that, and then they, they get like the the real what they want out of Hogan out there, uh, and then they literally like, she's all that at him because he was like the yeah. dweeb, <laughs> and they were the cool kids. Should have been just a long shot of Hogan coming down the ramp in his NWO gear, like taking off a pair of glasses or something and letting his hair down. It's looking yeah. beautiful. <laughs> I mean, oh, cool kid now. Yeah. I like the, yeah, the, the the whole wolf pack thing with six and everything like that. Yeah, yeah. The, they made it cool. They were a the cool part of the NWO because the minute Bischoff came in and it was a Hogan promo every Nitro and, uh, you know, that's the, 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 the NWO um, Wolfpack starts proper with Sting and Lex Luger in the NWO. Uh, well, and he used to, do, used to do the spray paint as well. And even as a, as a kid, I was like, how the fuck are they going to wash that off? That's actually spray paint. <laughs> <laughs> I completely agree with you up up until about, what, mid-98, 99? When yeah. Because unfortunately, with a lot of uh, WCW is that there's these like it's, it sort of goes back to my Hollywood Blondes pick in that it, it's such a small window of when it's amazing. Yeah, but when when the wheels came off the NWO, they came off hard and fast. Yeah. And arguably, I, I you know I, I we could do retrospective booking, of course, but like Starcade '97, Sting should have beaten Hogan clean. It should have been the beginning of the dismantling of the NWO. That's what the yeah. rest of '98 should have been. Yeah. yeah. And off they go, but because I think people like you, because you were saying about it being a Marmite thing, and you know, yeah, uh, yeah. But I think some the Marmite comes into don't. it because people forget that impact and how good those yeah. things, are. like lawn dart and Rey Mysterio, into a truck, yeah, like coming out with baseball bats and looking like taking on the entire WCW roster and looking like badass is doing it, yeah, having the cops around the ring and from them. Like they and the, all they've got is baseball bats, but the cops have got guns. It's, yeah, they've got it's like just sheer hands madness, on their guns but... and stuff, and it look yeah. it just it makes them look like gods. But then when it gets to the point where, like you know, you're saying about the Wolfpack splitting off, yeah, you had you know terrible members in the NWO, uh, the oh, po- yeah. pointless pointless things. You had um, 
you know, terrible matches you had, like the, the, the Scott Hall being drunk angle and, yeah, uh, you know, really bad things like that. Nash on commentary just being, just being an idiot and making everything that's happening around him look crap. Like those kind of things. Yeah. Sticking I think that, I think, well, that was, that was, so Starcade 98 is where it starts to really become like the shit show. I mean, yeah. they've already, Hogan's already fought Jay Leno at that point. I think at that, in the road. Uh, hog wild, sorry, that year or whatever. So it, it started to fall apart a little bit, and they've had the big celebrity moment. So now, like, what else do you do? But uh, by '98, Starcade, Gold, they've ended Goldberg Street for no reason. Uh, Scott Hall's starting his drunk angle. Yeah, the, the you know Stevie Ray is in the is in the the NWA. Uh, Was this pre or post Robocop? I forget. <laughs> post. <laughs> Robocop was a, a beautiful Post, moment in the 90s, early 90s. <laughs> Capital Combat. <laughs> One of the highlights <laughs> of 92. Was it 92 or 91? 91, I think. 91, yeah. Yeah, no, sorry, 92 is all, all year. 92 is a great year. Yeah. Other than that. But it's. It, and yeah, and it's... Flair's not there, so it's amazing. <laughs> you don't like Flair either. No, I love Flair. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I've got a. a I mean, not a, now, but I've got a cardboard cutout of him behind me. Um, I think <laughs> no, I love Flair, but I just think that in 1992, WCW just hit peak um, greatness in some of the matches, and I think what Sting Squadron versus Dangerous Alliances that year is. Yeah, games. that's 92. Um, you know, and there's some really good pay per views. Vader comes in, and it's Vader Sting in the mm -hmm. summer. Um, you know, the uh, Rude's in there as well, and uh, is Rude um, Steamboat mm -hmm. at one point. Uh, the whole ninja thing with Paul, uh, uh, um, Amy. so yeah, you know, Paulie. So yeah, I'll uh, WCW 92 is a great year. I will, I will say that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the outsiders, mate, that's a good shout on that. Good shout, hell yeah. I've one of the coolest t shirts, and all it said was the outsiders as well. Yeah. <laughs> always, played them and, always played with them on uh, WCW versus NWO Revenge. Uh, right. I'm going to go to my second best or oh, good one. Um, I'm going to give a couple of honorable mentions, though, before I get there. I'm just going to give a couple. Of, I'm going to give a shout out to a couple of teams. So, uh, Kendrick and London. Yeah, I I'd, I'd floated about them. I was like, the good. Shocking, shocking gear. Shocking gear. Shocking. Those those baggy pleather pants. No baggy baggy pants with oh. like um like harlequins on the side for no reason. They, like, didn't they have harlequin masks weird. as well? Yeah, they'd they run would, out. Run they'd out wear, with those. They'd wear and run out with them. I, I was, well, yeah. Presentation shite, but like There's actual team, brilliant. Paul London in Ring of Honor oh. in the early days was a revelation. Paul Paul London smiling at Vince. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we'll go down as one of the greatest things in history. One of the greatest ones. Uh, for my own, this is for my own personal thing, because this is like one of the first ever WWF tag teams I ever saw, but power and glory. Paul Roma with Paul Roma in it. Paul Roma and Hercules. Just for that, I just I, I don't know what it is about them, right? They were one of the first tag teams I saw. And it, it, when anybody ever mentions tag team, power and glory pops in my head. <laughs> and I don't know, right. honestly, I don't know why that is. Um natural disasters. Yeah. Yep. One um, of the greatest teams of all time. I say that. it every episode, John Tenter was a lovely man. <laughs> <laughs> I will continue to say it every episode now. We shall continue to say it every episode. Uh, and this is where I get stuck a little bit. So I'm going to, in the honorable mentions, I'm going to say the Steiner brothers. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. As a, a tag team. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, for my pick, I'm going to go with the ECW version of the Dudley Boys. Yes. They are, without a doubt, one of the best tag teams of all time. And, and like, one of the best stables of all time. Well, brilliant, yeah. But, they, I mean, they, came, they were born out of a stable. 
They're a stable, born from a stable. So they came from Raven's Nest. They were part of that originally. Um, and there was more than just, uh, I mean, there was a team before Bubba Ray and, and Devon as well. You know, Big Dick Dudley and Dances with Dudleys were, were a team. And there was a couple of other people. There was Snot Dudley. Snot. Sign Guy Dudley. Sign Guy Dudley. Obviously, uh, Little Spike later on. Spike, yeah. Uh, uh, um, Little Spike Dudley, LSD, yeah. Um, wasn't yeah. he Lesnar's first opponent in WWE? Could I, have been. I vividly remember Spike just getting flung around for miles or, around the uh, Could have been. He's a, didn't, he's Brock, a, didn't Brock at first just smash through people? Yeah, yeah, like yeah, for ages. It wasn't Dudley one of them. Is, uh, his first appearance, he appears during like a tag team match at the side of the ring and just smashes everybody. And I think Spike's one of those people who gets... Uh, yeah, at the time I was like, well, his insurance premiums is just fucking skyrocketed. Like, see ya. <laughs> to be fair though, I, my, he survived, Spike Dudley survived Mike Awesome. Has anyone, have you guys seen um, Guilty as Charged? 2000, yeah. I think it is. Yeah. My yeah. God. Yeah. Yeah. My yeah. God, my God, that is man. awful. Like, it, I mean, that poor kid just getting destroyed in every. Got... If you can go over the top rope through a table, Mike Austin was doing it to him in that match. It's oh, thickening. <laughs> I've got a, I've got an ECW, D, a couple of ECW DVDs actually uh, around here, and, and and that's definitely on one of them. <laughs> 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 but yeah, the Dudley Boys. I mean, from from inciting a riot, or almost inciting a riot. Uh, with promos, you know, to to just some of the matches they had um, in the ECW, uh, like later on when they first joined WWF, they were they they sort of were proto ECW kind of versions of them, and then they morphed into something else different, and they became one of the greatest tag teams of all time. They won, I think, more tag team championships than anybody else from different promotions, and you know, even the Steiners. So, and we did actually get to see the Steiners versus the uh, Dudley Boys, but it was uh, in TNA. Yeah, that's a great <laughs> word. At the end of the run. So let's let's uh, not forget to uh, Bubba Ray, the power bomb and a poor old frail woman. <laughs> twice. Twice. <laughs> twice. Twice. Yeah. Twice. Yeah. That's uh, one I think that yeah. sticks in your mind because you just see, you just remember Bubba Ray's expression when he's done it. He's like. Yeah, yeah, the haunting stare of Bubba Ray Dudley. But the best part of it is knowing that Mae Young was mad at him for being soft on her. Yeah. Yeah. And proper kicked off in the backstage and he was like, All right, I'll 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 lay it in. All right. <laughs> <laughs> is that right? Off the stage then, darling. <laughs> <laughs> and the three yeah. such a good looking move as well. Oh, mate. Yeah. So like, when I went to the cinema about twenty odd years ago, we used to mess about like in the back doing wrestling and I've I've delivered so many 3Ds to people and it hurts. <laughs> yeah. Early 2000s I worked at home base and we used to do wrestling moves onto the soil bags in the garden center. Um uh, we you know just set up a big square of them and just do moves. It was fantastic. The 3D was always a classic. <laughs> the 3D also um was put over as a ridiculously powerful move in ECW as well cuz it broke yeah. Sandman's neck. It broke yep. Buell McGillicott's neck. It broke up the gangsters. I can't remember which one of the th those two. Um, he broke. I think it might have been Mustafa. He broke. They broke his neck. Obviously, storyline wise, they broke the necks. But like, it was um, really put over strong as. Oh yeah. yeah. Like yeah. the move in ECW. Like it's, it's kind of like protected like the one winged angel is now. Yeah, definitely. They, I mean, Heyman knows what he's doing when he's putting over moves. He's, he's talked about that before. Like, you know, if, uh, I think when he was uh, the SmackDown 6, he, he was saying he wanted just like one veteran to put in the mix and to protect a move by that veteran, you know, like get the, he, he, he said he could get, he wanted to get the um, the sleeper hold, I think it was, back over. Or, or like, either the sleeper hold or the, the full Nelson, one of those. Right, right. He wanted to get that move back over, and he was like trying to get a veteran in who could do that, and like just he could get that move back over. And anytime that veteran puts that move on you, you know, boom, that's it. You've lost this match. This guy's lost it. Can and you imagine about... working though? ECW at that time, you're like, I oh, fancy a few. I fancy a bit of time off. Hey, Paul, can I get a match with the Dudley Boys? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Would you want? I'll, I'll take a broken neck. Yeah, <laughs> be fine. But. 
like just like Power Glory being the first sort of WWF tag team. I remember the Dudley Boys in ECW are the first wrestlers I ever heard swear. Um, which I know sounds strange, but when you actually yeah. hear it, yeah, because you're like you're used to the WWF and the WCW, and I think that was part of the appeal of ECW initially. I had uh, I had a VHS of an ECW VHS, and it was an official one. It was the one where uh, Kamar, uh, oh, what's it called? Kimono Leahy. Kimono Wanna Leia. That's it. Kimono Wanna Leia. Um, Tremendous she, name. Tremendous name. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Does she does a strip tease because the power goes name. out in the ECW arena? So that's on the DVD. And, and, and as a 14 year old, 15 year old lad, I was like, I like this. I like this company. <laughs> the swearing and this woman with boobies out. This is, uh, this is for me. But the, the, the first thing I think is the Dudley Boys interrupting uh, Joel Gertner. They come out and interrupt his promo. And it's, it's Devon's. ECW promo with the the quickest, the black of the, the, you know, all that sort of thing he did. Uh, he dropped that when he went to WWE, but in, in ECW particularly, the WWE boys are oh, magnifique uh, for me. Yeah, so they're, they're my thing. I think in terms of their legacy as well, like, there's very few places that you could go to and shout Devon and not hear somebody go, get, get the, the tables. tables! Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they dragged out that uh, was a bit out a bit yeah. too much, like you know. But... It's nice. It's all right now <laughs> for nostalgia, but at the time it was like, yeah, give yeah. up. You can drop like, that, boys. You don't have to do that anymore. Anyway. No. They also um, broke a bit of a convention as well on ECW. They had no theme music, and I thought that always made them look really super badass. They always came out to nothing. They were they yeah. were the only team. And when they had <coughs> match, also they made uh, Axel Rotten and Balls Mahoney look remotely good. Yes, because they had yes. matches with those two, and it's some it's some of the best. Like and you know the the, the thumbtacks on a table spot, and then they added fire to it, and they did these like re- like things. That, I, I remember like you were saying about um, the riots as well. Like I, yeah. I had a video of it ain't Seinfeld. Yes, I've a, got that on DVD. Um, and is is that the one where they get the kid th- to climb off the balcony in Elks Lodge and actually get come down? Like I'm sure a ki- in one of them, a kid looks like literally climbs over the balcony to get to them. Oh right, uh, it, might, they... it might not tell me that on the back, but I can tell you where it's from if you just give me two so- two moments whilst I find it. Well, carry on, Jay, carry on. But yeah, it's it's like they they did that. They did the, there's the Heat Wave '99 promo, which. Um, went a bit far, and they had uh, TNN executives, the, the network they were about to go on in the crowd going, oh, I don't know about having these lot on. Because it was like, <laughs> it, it, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not repeating it because my my parents might hear this, but oh, yeah. it there there's a lot of, um, yeah, it, it quite... Gr- questionable crudent, material sometimes. Questionable yeah. material, something that wouldn't fit nowadays. Yes. But like you yes. were saying, though, as a 17-year-old lad with the video going, oh, they're <laughs> saying some bad things. Exactly, exactly. They're, they're, they're quintessential for that. Um, definitely. I can't find that. Deep. I know I've got that. This ain't Seinfeld, because I'm a big fan of Seinfeld. And I bought it, because <laughs> I thought that was the funniest, stupidest name for a wrestling event I've ever seen in my entire life. Um, you know why, but, you know why yeah. they called it that, though, right? Uh, because Seinfeld was massive at the time. No, it's because no. the show happened the same night as the last ever episode of Seinfeld. Oh. Ah, that makes sense. Trivia. Trivia, folks. <laughs> um, I've got, no, I've got this, the uh, ECW, the most extreme matches. Rawr. Rawr. Uh, this is a, a two-disc WWF set, so that's... Uh, Probably not got the most extreme matches on it. <laughs> Can we agree that uh, the Dudley Boys also had the best pyro in WWE? Oh, oh, Mr. Nile, that's a question now. What about Senor Kane? Yeah, I mean, Blue Tista. Yeah, but just like the, the whole <laughs> <of> the rockets <laughs> coming down. Gunshots, though. <laughs> I remember when he came back. Oh, round, first, uh, time. I and liked how I liked how uh, the Dudleys incorporated the pyro into the music as well. Like, oh, it's on! It's coming up! Oh yeah, down, down, yeah. down, down. Yeah, no, I, I, <laughs> oh, that might have to be a 
a question for another time, that one now. Best yeah. high roads, Ooh. best entrances. Oh, right. <laughs> best and worst entrances. Uh, right, Mr. Jordan, you start oh, us off, sir. Here we go. Worst. Getting into dangerous territory. Yeah. Where right. None's been duplicated yet. Yeah. Um, no, but we're starting off with the worst. So, yeah, go for I've... it, mate. So I've I've got a question to ask before I reveal this. Can I uh, do a concept of a tag team rather than name one in particular? Oh well, I was I was going to say this at the start. The only rule I'm going to set down for this is you can't pick a tag team that's just um, two guys who are going for the belt. So, sure, it's not that. It's not know, that. If they've but not got I... a name or, or or a sort of gimmicky type thing. And so no that. Braun Strowman and Nicholas. Yeah, <laughs> I thought that, but I like that. I'm one of the few. <laughs> oh god. Um, no, my it's it's any team that is the either has the word new in front of it, age outlaws exempt, yeah. or if they have the the numbers two thousand oh, at the end mate. of their tag team name. If any of those tag teams, name me one of them that did well. New Rockers, Leaf Cassidy and, Sh- and Marty Janay bit crap new midnight express bob holly and bart gun bit crap, crap. lod 2000 hawk uh, hi, uh, animal and heidenreich or animal and draws i can't remember which one but either way no, both of animal, them, uh, animal crap. and draws animal but, and draws LOD but animal and heidenreich nwo 2000 didn't oh. go particularly well you know what i'm saying i have those two written down on my list i, I don't have those no. two as the, as one of my picks but but go on. Oh. yeah 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 but yeah, I I think that the concept of the new version of something that worked before the new blackjacks. Yes. Uh. Oh, oh people like just lazy. It it starts dead. It carries on to be dead. <laughs> All these teams had longevity for some weird reason. Like they they had like a good year or two <clears throat> to get, but not one of them ever was not even like. A, a, a millisecond of their time was anywhere near as good as anything that went before it. It's a pointless endeavor. I never understood why they did it. And it always used to irk me. I hated new versions. Even as a kid, I hated new rockers yeah. with yeah. like Leaf and bloody that Marty Janet. That, that was always dude. With their little that onesies that look yeah. uh, like, oh, just In 20 hilarious. years time, we'll have the new New Day. <laughs> Sorry, New Day don't count on that list either because they're yeah. they're beasts. Obviously, but just, right, you know well, what I mean? Like it's just no. that whole thing. It's it it just grates on me, and like, it it just really fits in there with me for being like the worst of tag teams. I know I I totally understand what you mean, and I'm gonna go with one of my picks here because one of my picks has the word two thousand in, but they're they're not, they're a little bit different about what than what you were saying. You you're saying about the the new version of something or an old team two thousand. My team's Techno Team 2000. <laughs> <laughs> I, knew it. I knew that was the one. I fucking knew it. My first pick. <laughs> no. Techno Team 2000. I was like, someone's going to have that. Someone's yeah. going yes. to have that. It wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> well, Miles, it's, it's me and you, mate. We're going with it. And I'm picking it because of Eric Watts. God damn you, Eric Watts. I had to watch you in WCW in 92 to 94. Shoved down our throats because your dad was the booker, and then uh, and then you end up in WCW, a uh, WWF. Sorry, but uh, uh, what a shit team! I've got it here. Um, ninety five to ninety six, they were in WWF, and I, I can only remember like three, three or four matches, if that. Um, and they were all crap. Um, yeah, they got sent back to um developmental when they went to WWF. They had a few. Yeah. Like they were 50 50s, a couple of wins, a couple of losses, and then they were like, Yeah, um, fuck off. <laughs> um, they were actually featured on the Raw 10th anniversary show in the worst gimmicks segment. <laughs> That's an accolade, <laughs> of course. They were, of course. They didn't, were. didn't Eric Watts as well slither his way into TNA at first? I, I for some weird reason remember him in uh, like a black vest and big baggy black pants with a red yellow stripe on him, stinking up the asylum in the early days. Oh my god! You know what? You mean... On the old wrestling channel. Yeah. Eric god, Watt. yeah. I've literally just opened Wikipedia and there it is, Techno Team Two Thousand. <laughs> uh, <let me> <coughs> Sorry, Travis and Troy. 
Those were the names in Techno Two Thousand. Eric Watts was uh, Troy. I'd forgotten about the, these guys as well. Just awful. Th- it's I, all coming I mean, screaming back. This like, was like the peak worst part about WWE from this, like the, the Techno Team Two Thousand. Uh, you, at that time, you've got Manta, you've got these guys, Bastian Bugger, you got TJ oh. Hopper, the plumber. Um, the, the goon! The goon! He's got to have a job. He's got to have a job to have a gimmick. <laughs> uh, wasn't there um, a baseball player? M- like, um, MVP was... was all the time. He was, he was uh, a bit early. I think he was like 94, 93, something like that, because that's when right. the, the baseball people went strike. Yeah. Um, but yeah, a lot of shitty gimmicks around that time. Awful stuff. But nuggets of good stuff, like his like gold dust when he first started. That's around this time, 95, 96. And that when he first started was amazing. But anyway, that's for a different show. We're not we're not here to talk about gold dust. We're here to talk about Techno Team 2000. Because nobody yeah, else is. <laughs> <laughs> Must be. Must well, be. So <laughs> <laughs> Me and Niall, then we've both gone with our second, our first choice. There, we picked something, and it's uh, it's sort of dovetailed into nicely into Jordan's pick there. So, Jordan, give us your second pick. For so, the worst. um, can I do some honorable mentions? Because this was really yes. hard. This was right, really I've, tough. Because I've got, I've got some, mate. I have got some honorable mentions for this one. Don't so, you worry. But yes, yes, go on. First, that came to mind, and I think I yelled this to you drunk in the toilets at MPF. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, the Bushwhackers were one of my first things. Uh, even as a kid, I thought these nonce weirdos just did not deserve to... Like, they were just awful. They were licking kids. They were, like, ba- basically a, a form of Nazi marching down to the ring. Their matches... <laughs> yeah, sort of, yeah. It, it's kind of got that similar sort of vibe to a fascist dictatorial marching army march it has, let's be real yeah it's got a weird militaristic march for some reason and they're all and dressed in camo as well exactly yeah exactly yeah see i'm not just i'm not just paranoid yeah. <laughs> and there's and you know I, but then their matches stunk their promos were awful it was all ways woes oh, okay. oh it was just tripe in every set they got jameson that was peak oh god i mean you know oh, the 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 terrible jew stereotype that happened back in the things oh my gosh it's a broke my gosh oh my like, god oh my god i, I come down ways. myself oh my god you know and it was just like oh could it get worse yes it could they dressed as doinks at the survivor series oh. in and I, it, you're just like oh, no ne- never hall of fame Piss off. Like, just <laughs> fake. fake. Like, Tori Wilson, Stacey Keeble, I'd put them in there a million times over before these two. Cretins. But they're not. They're not my worst tag team. All right. Sorry. <laughs> Surprisingly, from all that venom. Um, <laughs> yeah. Men on a Mission, they're another one that I think are garbage. Ooh, like, rap. terrible yep. raps that make the Wrestle Rock Rumble sound like a good rap. <laughs> um, it, and... Again, just garbage, stereotype crap, but also just not good. Just not good in the ring. Terrible as faces, terrible as heels. Um, Injured people, just, yeah, just even as a kid, disconnected. But um, the team I went for um, were uh, mentioned on this podcast a few episodes two ago, I think, maybe even the last one. Mm -hmm. Um, It's uh, the Harris Boys. So uh, every, but every single incarnation of the Harris boys from Blue Brothers to Blue Creative Brothers. Control to yep. um Skull and Eight Ball, I think they were in yep. DOA. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Um to just Ron and Don Harris in DNA. Just awful. Yeah. DNA, DNA was where you uh, where they had the uh the Nazi tattoos on show, wasn't it? Yeah, well that was where I was going with it as well. Because yeah. like that you know they've got Nazi tattoos, they're bigots as well, and yeah. they're crap. You can be one or the other in the wrestling industry, apparently, but these, t- <laughs> but you know what I mean? They, they just, they weren't talented. There was nothing good about them. I, I get, it's kind of like to your first episode, how far can you get being Hulk Hogan's mate? How far can you get being Jeff Jarrett's mate? Like just shite, just awful. And it, it, it brought, it came down to, to be honest with you, the longevity of how bad they were. Cause at least with Bushwhackers, um, Men on a Mission, that's kind of their major gimmick. You know, I know the Bushwhackers were the cheap herders back in the day, but I never saw that. 
Um, no, no, I've, I've got no no knowledge of that one either. Yeah. yeah, apparently they were really good back in the day, but I yeah, that's never seen it. Yeah. Um, Men on a Mission, Mabel went on to become uh, Big Viscera, and that was quite funny. <laughs> but... Also, the uh, Lillian Garcia angle, which was just fucking weird. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? I don't remember that. What, Big so... Viss and Lillian Garcia? Yeah. But when he came back as... Uh... He, he came back sex- as like a sexy guy. He yeah, wasn't yeah, sexual yeah. chocolate, obviously, but he was a sexy. Big he was Daddy like, V, wasn't it? Big, Big Daddy da- V, that was it. Yeah, Thank you. and 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 he was he was coming on to Lillian Garcia all the time. I think there's no, a- no, no, no. Oh. She was coming on to him. Seriously, so he turned her down, and I'm like, this what? This isn't supposed to happen. <laughs> yeah, he like he broke a heart like in the ring. There's hope for us all yet. <laughs> but okay, it, it showed there was hope for us all. So, um, but like. They also like if you think about those guys, right? That was their incarnation. Think about the imen- the many, many, many attempts of different gimmicks to try and get these two sacks of nothing anywhere. Yeah, all I, that they got going for them is that they're identical twins and they can do that twin magic bullshit. But it it was just nothing worked. Like they yeah. were they were the worst members of the worst of the stables in WWE when they were doing like you had the biker gang. Um, Los Bariquas. Oh, oh! I do not think that they were. I think the oh. truth. Com- I think the Truth Commission were the worst. The South African separatists. They- <laughs> but they had they had Don Callis. No, when they first started, they had the Commodore, a South African guy. They did. Like, there's about for three weeks of the Commodore on TV talking about how he's going to purify the WWE, and basically they're trying to do a, an apartheid. South African gimmick in the WWE in 1997. Okay. Yeah, um, I bet you any money you've got Vince in the background going, this is great stuff, pal. This is great Keep stuff. <laughs> Keep that up, pal. Keep that up. <laughs> got these overalls for you, pal. Like, just being, yeah, but just like nothing, nothing good. Like, I can't, I, name me a Ron and Don Harris um, angle, name me a Ron and Don Harris match, name me a Ron and Don Harris um, gimmick. That was any good. It wasn't good, but Creative Control got them three, yes, three WCW tag titles. Jesus Christ. I'm probably got like, they probably were on those quarter of a million a year contracts as well. This was in the Russo yeah. years as well. So, ah, well, that oh, makes sense. Yeah. Awesome. That makes sense to be fair. Uh, absolute shambles. Even, even yeah. God thinks he's a twat. <laughs> Sorry. I've had water. I'm... <laughs> right, Mr. Nile, give us your second worst one. You you might not agree with this. Oh, but okay. you I'm all about the controversy this evening. I'm bringing you are, it. You are, you're bringing it. You're controversy. Uh, have you been reading Eric Bischoff's book? <laughs> <laughs> um, so my pick yeah. is the dynamic dudes. <laughs> Shane Douglas and Johnny Ace. It's like there's nothing that's made me want to turn off the TV. Like when you see them two on, it's like nope, nope, <laughs> nope, nope. I uh, with their with their uh, ninety skateboards and uh, carrying them as well. But they, Not, they, they um, never rode. Never rode them at all. Just carrying them. It's just <laughs> an utter fucking cringe fest <laughs> from yeah. start to finish. Hell yeah. Uh, yeah, that that's that's the good shout. Eh? That is a good one. Like that's the only wrestling I've ever seen of Johnny Ace. Apparently, he was amazing in Japan, but yeah, I've apparently. never seen anything of that. And uh, and I, and I, and I, I will not have it at all. Do you not think um, it's weird how all these really shitty wrestlers have this aura of we were really good in Japan? Because like one, <laughs> one man gang was considered amazing in. Japan. I will hear nothing bad about about that man. Nothing. <laughs> <It was okay. laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna, ch- gonna move back and change gate. Uh, you know, the Japanese have great taste in wrestling. One man, one man gang may have been good, uh, but Akeem the African Dream never heard of him. Was not. <laughs> never heard of him. Never I heard have of him. Um, I've got a couple of honourable mentions as well. I mentioned All right. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so the West Hollywood Blondes, Lenny and Lodi. Yeah. Who were yeah. a proto Billy and Chuck, but just went in the absolute fucking wrong direction. 
<laughs> um, who else did I have? I did have Ron and Don as well. Um, alluding to one of yours as well, Jordan, Harlem Heat 2000. Yeah, that was the other one I couldn't remember of the 2000s. Thank you. With uh, the, uh, That was with Ahmed Johnson where he was yeah. big T and him yeah. and Booker T had a match over who could use the letter T after yeah. their name. WCW, yes, they uncensored, I think 2000. A lot of them were oh, from... 99, possibly. A lot of them were from WCW as well. So do you remember um, when David Flair teamed with Crowbar? Yes, oh, Daphne is their manager. Daphne is... Oh, God, yeah. Yeah. That just made no sense in my head at all, that tag team. Not um, whatsoever. Boogie Nights as well with Das Wunderkind. Oh, come on. And, and Disco Inferno. Yeah. Oh, come on. They were... Mate, that's a classic. I know it, it might be the classic. smart thing to do, but I cannot fucking stand Disco Inferno. I, I, <laughs> I created a Twitter account just so I could like sit there and watch Lance Storm and Co. slagging him off. <laughs> he also was just like a dance. <clears throat> like at, at least Alex Wright was a dance and some wrestling. Like this guy was just shit. Yeah. Let's be yeah. fair. Let's he be runs fair. a wrestling school. How? What's come out of that? Bet you his trainees wrestle in XPW. <laughs> yeah. Bet you. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, I've got right. I've I've got some honourable ones. Oh, hang on. Now, did you give us your second one? Yeah, dynamic dudes. Oh, dynamic dudes. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I've got some honourable mention ones. Um, the Ding Dongs. From WCW, I I had them in my I had them as a potential thing, but I thought that's just too daft. Uh, yeah, you know that's what I'm here for. The Ding Dongs and the Hunchbacks. They were they were they, for one the, week they were obsessed with bells, the next week they had Hunchbacks and they couldn't be pinned. Uh, this is uh, the Jim Hurd area, area. Was it Ollie Anderson who said that I'll just put a submission on them and break their legs and then they've lost or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah so <laughs> something like that. that. I don't know. Like, yeah. huh? I think it may have been Bobby Eaton, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I had uh, um, my honourable mention. Some of them have been mentioned already. The Bushwhackers, Men on a Mission, the Harris Twins. Armageddon 2000. Does anyone remember, remember them? So, after said Truth Commission broke up and uh, the Jackal took Kurgan away, um, Sniper and Recon, uh, one of who went on to become Ball Buchanan, um, formed a tag team called Armageddon 2000 and they were alive for about a month and then just like like Doug Furness and Phil Lafon who were also on my honourable mentions for the worst tag team list just they were survived. great in Japan apparently so yeah apparently so <laughs> uh, but like unfortunately they were never great in the WWF and they had multiple opportunities to prove so but they just never did but the team I'm going with uh, consists of uh, Timothy Dunn and Steve, Steve, sorry, Timothy Well and Stephen Dunn. And that's uh, well done from the WWF uh, in 1995. Came around for a, a cup of coffee in the big time. A cup of coffee um, in the big time. But one of the stupidest names of all time. <laughs> Timothy Well. And Stephen Dunn. Well done. Well done, everybody. You've come up with a fucking stupid name for a tag Gold, team. let's run with that. Let's hey. run with that. What else have we got about him? It doesn't matter. Their name's well done. <laughs> what about what about outfit? I know what we'll do. We'll put a thong bikini over short over cycle shorts. And make it pink. Mm. Make it's it gotta be pink. Pink and yellow. And I, I was going to go with them as well. In WCW, there's guys called High Voltage, High Energy. Yeah. But they were the high tag voltage. team. High Voltage. They were, the, they were like the jobber tag team. And I was going to I was going to pick either High Voltage or Fire and Ice, Scott Norton and Ice Train. <laughs> but I sort of liked Ice Train a little bit, especially when he was with Teddy Hart. Uh, and, and, but Scott Norton, I just never enjoyed it. I always thought he would just look like a brick wall. What a wandering on big again, big in Japan. <laughs> Those Japanese people like their crap. 
I love the <laughs> fact that we've all had like the Harris brothers as a pick or honourable mentions. Yeah. Because that's had, pretty fucking unanimous. The the bushwhackers and men on the mission on there as well. Like our cha- parts of our childhood were, ru- were all ruined by the bushwhackers and men on a mission. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the reason I'm giving it to Well Done is they ruined. Uh, I think the ninety six or the ninety five Royal Rumble, it maybe that. You're like you're waiting for someone to come out, and all of a sudden, it's like, who the fuck is this, Stephen Dunn? And then all of a sudden, who the fuck is this, Timothy Well? Why the why why are these guys hanging around for? They're in it for a good like 15, 20 minutes. They're hanging about for a bit. You put just piss off. What a shit tag team as well. <laughs> Absolute worthless. <laughs> Let's name them like I like to have my steaks. Yeah. With ketchup. <laughs> Lots what of the ketchup. hell is a steak burrito? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that man. <laughs> but yeah, well, so on that note, uh, well done, everybody. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, beautifully played, beautifully played. <laughs> so, Jordan. Thank you very much for coming on, my brother. Uh, where can people find you? Uh, they can find me on Instagram at Podpunk Podcast, on Twitter at Pod underscore Punk, uh, Facebook dot com slash Podpunk Podcast. Um, we're now uh, gone to a monthly show. I have a baby now, so um, and everyone's. A bit, uh, thank you very much. Uh, but after touring as Reeks kindled, because I think I told you on both Hello and Who Found on my podcast yeah. when you came on that the only reason people used to be guests of my show is because of COVID. So um, now that that's gone. Mm-hmm. Um, Finding guests is a bit difficult and uh, <laughs> putting all the effort in as well when you're tired from baby brain has been a bit difficult. So I'm going to be going monthly, maybe every two weeks. We'll see. But it's going to be a little less frequent than it was. But yeah, they can find me there. We're on Spotify. We're on SoundCloud, Apple Podcast, and Stitcher as well. So you've got four beautiful places you can listen to it. Um, and a, yeah, a variety of guests, including... Mr. Barrett, and yes. uh, yeah, go and listen to my episode because uh, in it, John tells you about the story of AEW and how he went to watch AEW at Daly's place. So, yes. there you go, and There's also going to uh, all in as well. So, uh, yeah. yeah, yes, because I'm yes. dead excited about that. <laughs> but yeah, been you are one place. of the you are like me, one of the 35,000 who bought tickets on the opening day. I've also been to uh, Impact Zone. Seriously, in Orlando? Yep. And I, I saw the... Sorry, Impact... no, before you go anywhere else, what go was on. your name in the Impact Zone? Because you couldn't have been Jordan Pritchard or Vitamin J. You would have had to have changed your name. It was Gordon Richard. God. What's Gordon Richard doing in the Impact Zone? <laughs> <laughs> Watching a terribly put together wrestling show. Um, it was the... It was the impact before Hogan and Bischoff took over. Seriously, it was so the one I was have, at. Yeah, you would have seen uh, Desmond Wolf, oh, uh, yeah. Nigel McGuinness. Oh, yeah. you lucky boy! And also, well, I, I've been. For, can I? Can I wax lyrical a little bit about Just, it, yeah, some yeah, indie yeah. shows and stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, that one, like uh, the main event, was AJ Styles, Samoa Joe, and Christopher Daniels. As a, a three way sort of like doing, I guess rekindling. Was it Genesis they did? The fame is the famous one. Yes, yes, yeah. So yes. they did that. Um, one of my favorite things. Um, is uh, I did. I went to Ring of Honor versus FWA back in the day. At oh, yeah. Bre- Town at uh, what was it called? <laughs> it was somewhere in um, I can't remember. Somewhere in London. Very famous boxing venue. I can't remember what it's called. And um, in there, um, the two things that happened at that was uh, I met um, Mikey Whipwreck, which was dead cool. And then at the back of the hall was uh, a bunch of DVDs and a bunch of merch, Ring of Honor stuff. And Ring of Honor just started to percolate at this point. And I'm talking to this guy and I'm like, oh, yeah, it's nice to meet you. Oh, and he's American. And he, I'm like, so what, are you are you a wrestler yourself? He goes, oh, no, no, no. I own and run um, Ring of Honor. And I was like, oh, brilliant. And I had this like... Uh, WWF phone belt and I got loads of people to sign it and uh, I got him to sign it and it was um, Rob Feinstein oh 
<laughs> and at one point that belt i was just like must get rid <laughs> yeah because <laughs> unfortunately it's right next to a cm punk signature and loki and in the middle of it is i thought she was 18 rob feinstein <laughs> from our video Okay, um, no. So that was an interesting but, uh, one. And then the last one I'll talk about before we go is when uh, TNA came to the UK for the very first time, they did two shows in Liverpool, one in Coventry and one down in London. Yeah. And I were friends with people at Future Shock Wrestling, um, uh, which is a wrestling in the here in Stockport. And they um, had Alex Shane. Do, do you guys know Alex Shane from yeah, the yeah, UK yeah. wrestling scene? Yeah. Yeah. He he's the he was the promoter and he was like, can we get some trainees from the wrestling school to work at the shows? Uh, my mate who was working there said, do you want to come as well? So I was like, absolutely, I want free I want free entry to CTNA. Yeah, sure I do. Why not? So my job on at the Liverpool shows was to stand in the crowd and if people stood up in the front row too long, to tell them to sit down. Right. Very taxing job. Yeah. And then in uh, Coventry at Skydome, it was to sit with Alex Shane's wife and kid and get them whatever they wanted. And when Alex Shane left, they both went, just sit down and watch the show. We'll get our own snacks and stuff. And I was like, banger. I got great, <laughs> it was great, great. And I got to see loads of really cool TNA stuff. But at the end of the night, in so the Liverpool Olympia, I think it's called, the theater. It's uh, Have you ever seen Jody Fleisch nearly kill himself with a shooting star press? Yeah, guys, have seen that on Botchamania? Yes. yes. It's that It's that building. Right? So right. it's like this. Uh, so we're in there. Where the stage is to the right of it is a, a door. And me and my friend, um, we were stood in front. Uh, we were stood by that door. And then outside the door was um, a bus and uh, a guardrail. And the guy, they were just said, look, just keep the fans back because it was the first night and the guys literally from TNA flew over, drove from Manchester Airport, did the show. And th so they were all knackered, you know, by the time the show had ended. And they're all getting on a bus going to the hotel. So like, just, you know, keep the fans at bay as best you can. And uh, there's loads of wrestlers on there. There was Booker T, Rhino, Kurt Angle was there, Gail Kim. Uh, there was a Gail Kim Awesome Kong match. Um, there was a lot of really good stuff on this on this tour. It was dead good. Most sick machine guns are on there too. And uh, there's these kids. And as the wrestlers are coming by, there's all these Scouse kids in front of the guardrail going, ah, can we get your autograph? Eh? And one kid, um, me, and, me and my mate, are stand, we're staring, looking at the fans. We're not looking at the wrestlers coming in. We're, look, we're keeping an eye on them, right? And then I hear one of the Scouse kids yell, Booker! Booker T, can I get you an autograph? And then I hear a woman's voice behind me. And I turn around and Awesome Kong stood there. Oh. <laughs> right, Suddenly, it's, it's now kayfabe that that Scouse kid was Mike Markey from the Crapsons. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, though, our gaze had to go away from the crowd to stop a very angry Awesome Kong. Oh, shit. Which, believe me, you can see me, right? I am not a big kid. No. <laughs> I was I was skinnier than this then. <laughs> Trying to stop her. Oh, it was dead funny. I, I was in bits. I just thought, oh, you idiot. You absolute <laughs> moron. So, yeah. Brilliant. Fantastic. Fantastic. Those are some of the fun times, like, before I became a lapsed fan, when I used to be in it all the time. It was dead fun. Yeah, I've I've not been for a while, so I am looking. I definitely am looking forward to uh, AEW. I think the last live event hmm, I went to, oh, I think it may have been a house show in in Manchester, WWE house show. Undertaker was there, and I screamed like a little girl because uh, we had uh, we had seats. Me and my mate Rick, we had seats right next to the entrance, basically uh, nice. at the ramp. So we were like first row of the of the uh, the back, and. Uh, the lights went out, the ding, uh, or the, the, the gong went off, and I was the loudest person in, in the Manchester United News Arena at that point, and <laughs> screaming like a little girl. Um, but yeah, um, I think that was the last time I went, and that was that was definitely pre-COVID. We went, I don't know if I've told this story before, we went to watch TNA when they were at uh, the, the, the Men Arena. Yeah. And me and, uh, me and Rick stood in the queue, we're just chatting, 
and somebody comes over to us that we've never seen before, don't know or anything like that, and then it just who starts talking to us like, "Who's your favorite wrestler?" My favorite wrestler's Owen Hart, uh, but I also like Bret Hart. But I really don't. And he just started going off, telling us everything. I had a badge of, I've still got it, a badge of Yoko Zuna. Uh, and he goes, do you like Yoko Zuna? Is he your favourite wrestler? And he just started talking. And Rick, my mate, just went, I have to go and stand over there now. And he walked off. <laughs> <laughs> and left me with this weirdo. <laughs> that's a good friend. So, yeah. I've so, met Rick and that's very on brand. <laughs> <laughs> So Rick, who will be editing this podcast now, will uh, no doubt cut this part out. But uh... <laughs> so yes, with thanks to Scientific Rick, uh, th- thank you very much, everybody. Cheers, Jordan. <laughs> Next month, Niall, are we? Is that nice one. Thanks for having me on. No worries, man. No worries. Uh, you're part of the stable now, so uh, we'll call on you at some point, and we'll play your music, and you'll do a running, I'm sure, on another episode <laughs> in the future. We um, should all meet up in London and record one. For yeah, I know Niall can. can't unfortunately be there, but we could yeah. maybe do a little thing. I could bring my gear. Yes, we could do yeah. some. We'll definitely do something. Hell yeah, we'll do that. Uh, definitely, definitely. But next month, Mister Niall, should we do what we just said then? Best and worst entrances. Or, or is that have we done that with the themes? You think? I don't know because you got one off entrances as well, haven't you? Like the big mania entrances and. Yeah, we, yes, right, yes, then, fine, yes, this is what we're doing. The best and worst entrances next month. Uh, and I think, I think Mr. Martin Battle from Incision is going to be doing this <gasps> for this no. one. Uh, so, so this could be a lengthy one. So get uh, get get your seats sat in for ready for next month, ladies and gentlemen. But anyway, on that note, um, I've not chosen uh, the, the song to play out with this month. But it'll no doubt be a silly, cheesy wrestling song. It might be Hulk Hogan's cover of Gary Glitter's song. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> Keep listening to find out, folks. All right, nice one, everybody. See you later. Bye. See you next Bye. month. Bye. See ya. I'm really-
heavenly sweep with a warm, kind heart. But when I'm doing it in the rain, I'm a fighting machine. Hey, Joe, where you been? We miss you so much. We want to see you. 